Hello everybody, I'm JackB1024 and welcome to episode 20 of our Dynamic Factorio Let's Play. Uh, sorry for the long break that we've had, uh, life got really busy, but that's all over, so back to the Let's Play series. Now the first thing you should notice is that we're in the testing world that I showed the build for the train stop uh, circuit. And the reason for that is uh, today's circuit we're going to be doing the FIFO queue. And I just want to have, you know, one of these creative worlds just so that it's easier to, you know, set up all the combinators. And then once we're done, you know, you can just get a blueprint, get it, and then I can just export it and import it into the main world. Okay, so firstly, uh, looking at last episode, I actually made a mistake, so I'll do a quick amendment to that. Um, if we look at this diagram here, uh, I mentioned that this setup here where we do h times 2 output h and that was basically to halve the number of stations that were sending a signal uh, so that we could lower it down to only one station sending a signal uh, a single signal of that type uh, and i said that uh, checking if it's below half would work uh, but that's actually not the case and the easiest way to think about this is let's say let's say we had two stations so we had station one and two, and they're sending a signal of one and two. So you add those two together, you get three. Half of three is one and a half, which will round down to one, or truncate. And one, only one station will be less than or equal to one. So that would work in that case. But let's say we had four stations, numbered one, two, three, four. You add those signals up, and you get 10. Half of 10 is five, every number that I just said is less than five, so they would all send it again. Uh, the way to actually properly do this is instead of doing h divided by two, um, you need to do the average, and any that are below the average, go through any above, wait for the opening. Uh, and that will make it, on average, half of them will be below the average. And in the same case, one, two, three, four, Add them up, that's 10, there's four signals, so divided by four gets you two and a half, truncated to two, and two of those signals would be below two, one and two. And so they would go back in, you do the same sequence again, and you get uh, three divided by two is one and a half truncated to one, and one signal goes out. So that's a change that we're gonna have to do. Now the issue with that is that means we need to know how many of each signal type uh, we're getting through into our system. And so to do that on our blue line here, let's see if I can do some really quick photo editing. Yeah, there we go. Um, where's the blue arrow? This one. Oh. Selection tool. What are you? Okay. Let's duplicate that layer and move it over here. Isn't that great? Looks beautiful. So on our blue line here, we will need uh, to output. Technically we need one of each. So we're gonna need, this blue line here will go into a new um, combinator that I would have, which will do for everything, uh, make it equal to one. For everything output it at value of one. And that would go onto a blue line that would be shared. And then here what we can do instead of doing this any less than zero check, we can check um, the signal we sent out. Was that on the blue line that's shared by everyone? Was that a value of one? And if so, we know we were the only one. If it's a value greater than one, we need to divide it by that number and we need to check if we're below the result. And if so, we go back here. Otherwise, we need to wait for an opening. Um, but I'll do that between the breaks. So I won't do that in this episode. In this episode, we're going to be concerned with the FIFO queue. Let's just clear up some trees so we have plenty of room. So how's our FIFO queue going to work? Um, so if we... I didn't actually save this image, so here's a great screenshot from last episode. So we have our stations, they send our signals to our two FIFO queues. Uh, one of them is for stations that can supply items, and the other is for stations that can demand items or request items. And then we check uh, a station that's requesting it. Do we have that on a supply line? If so, send a train to the supply station to then go to the demand station. 
So how are we going to set up this FIFO queue? The first thing we're going to need is a memory cell and some power for it. There we go. So there's our memory cell, normal setup. Uh, we're going to use red for resetting. So as long as our reset signal is zero, we will output everything's input count. Now there's actually a few ways you could do this FIFO queue. Uh, we could have it one item at a time, or we could have all the items per memory cell. So let's say we got a request for iron ore, and then we got a request for copper ore. Uh, we could either have the first line of our memory saying, well, we have a request for iron, and the second line saying we have a request for copper, or we could have them both in the first one. Now we're going to have them both in the first one because we need to check basically uh, any of these signals the same as any of these signals. Like, do we have the same type of signal on both of these inputs? And if we had it only one line uh, per one signal, one signal per line, then say this one had a copper saying, you know, station five requests copper. And this one was like, station eight can supply iron. They would never be equal because they would be waiting for them to clear before piping in the next thing. So what we're going to do is let's actually set up two lines. Uh, so we can show how data flows from one line to the next. So here's now our output will be at the top and our input will be from the bottom. So we need to check. Firstly, what we want to do is we want to get uh, each thing and turn it into a single value. And we can get that straight from the output, which is connected to the input. That will be fine. So this is going to tell us a value of one for every signal we have. Now, say we have copper here and we have copper and iron signals here. We only want to pass the iron signal through because we've already got a copper signal here. So this step is going to basically say, what signals do we have here? And ignore those signals from the next line. So we get our values of one. We will then get each thing. We will multiply it by, do I want minus two billion? Two billion will work. And we'll output it again. So, yep. Okay. We're gonna line this up in the green line just so that it doesn't um, connect into this memory cell. So let's say we had from here, we had, actually let's do it like this. So these constant combinators are just going to be our example signals. So we're going to say we have an iron ore signal, whatever. And from here we're going to have an iron ore signal, some other value. And we're going to have a copper signal of some value. So here we say, well, we've got an iron signal at this memory cell. And so we don't want the iron signal from the next memory cell. Now, one, two, I think that should do. We need the output of this. Can it reach the input of that? Yep. Don't want it on the red or the green line. Let's go on the red line. And we want the output of this memory cell also coming into there, uh, which will connect to that green line there. So here we go. We can see we've got our copper signal and we've got our iron signal, which is a giant negative number. Uh, that way only the copper signal will be let through. So for this one, we're going to say for each signal that's greater than zero, let it through. And then that should line up to this one, which will be our final thing. Uh, when red, yeah, equals zero. That's perfect. That through everything. And finally, yep, we'll do it like this. Red is less than 60. Output red. Give this a red value of one. So that's a 60 um, tick clock or a one hertz clock. And that can go, I can't use you on the red line because it would be connected to this, so it would always have a value of one. 
So we'll disconnect that and we'll connect it like that. So every second this will be outputting its value. Now the plan will be eventually to figure out the exact tick delay which looks like it's, let's see, uh, that would be you would output. We don't need to worry about how long this takes because it's directly connected so we can ignore this combinator. So this is one tick, two ticks, three ticks, so about four ticks because uh, we'll give it a fourth one for this. So this clock cannot be faster than four ticks. If it's faster than four ticks, we don't have time for uh, these combinators to update and get this one already to only output values that are new. There we go. So we've got now our iron and our copper signals, which means we're not going to let through any iron or copper signals. Uh, so if we turn this off, just so that it doesn't get any signal while I'm typing something in. And let's say, let's say we have a uranium ore signal. If I now turn this on, that signal should be valid, so it should pass through. And in fact, let's yeah, let's turn our clock off. So we can see here we go, our uranium ore is ready to turn and go in, but we've got a signal on the red line here. And then as soon as that ticks, boom, it's here. This is telling it, don't worry about uh, uranium ore anymore. And that goes through to there. So that's half of it done. Because we still need to deal with one other thing, and that is uh, easiest to show if this actually had a value, which it doesn't. But the issue is, let's say this is passing its signals on, right? So it just passed on its iron ore signal. In fact, let's, uh, I want to tick a pulse generator. Yeah, let's quickly make a pulse generator. Everything multiplied by negative one, I'll put it again. Everything greater than zero, I'll put it. So we'll give this a signal. Um, let's just give it a copper signal. And let's also now I don't mind this one being connected to the red. Uh, they're in the same colored line. And that was just a red signal to wipe these two memory cells. Turn you off, so that's not running good. Okay, so I'll send a pulse through here. Disconnect that now. Send a pulse through here, which will set this up with a value. So, so it's now got its copper ore value. Now we'll get this line. Yep, and we'll copy it down here. So this could now read from another one if we connected the green line here somewhere, which I actually could have just connected to this here. Uh, but that's fine for the moment. Now the issue is that our copper signal is ready to be passed on. So let's let it pass it on. There you go, it's passed on. Thank you. But it is still down here because we have no way to uh, wipe it once it has been passed on. So there's actually two things we're going to have to do. Is we don't only have to pass our signal on. We also have to know for each signal that was passed on, get rid of it from here. So for that, yeah, uh, we'll connect your red line to there. Uh, and I'm going to clear this one. Perfect. So this has a signal, this doesn't. So this is ready to pass on its copper signal. And we'll say get each signal, negate it. And output it. So this is outputting what signals we're going to pass on. And this is the negative of those signals. And we'll feed this back in to there. Uh, that can't actually feed in there. Just got a notification. Okay, nothing important. Okay, so what just happened? Ah, okay, that's that fixed. We can do that. 
So let's go copper ore value, connect this. That's closer to what it'll be finally like. Uh, clear everything. Give this a single tick. There we go, so that's got a copper value, that doesn't. Get rid of you because I don't need you anymore. So this is telling us we're going to add a copper signal here. So this will tell us to remove our copper signal from here. Now they're both, this output is piped into the same input as this one would be connected to, yep, on the green line. So this is going to have what new signals are we adding and what old signals are we getting rid of. And so now when we tick on, now you should have seen that both lines just flash there and this has a copper signal and this doesn't. So that, that worked fine. Now, now, I said about a four tick delay should be enough, but we can actually test that. Uh, I'll connect another line so that we can connect that, that, and you need your red connected there. Okay, that's all the connections in between the two lines. So now I can just uh, shift click and holding it over the previous one will uh, make sure that the connections that go down between the lines, so this red line here and this green line here, that they're actually on. So if I just put it here, there's no green connection there, no red connection there but you can just shift click between them and it will automatically add those circuit wires in. So here we go, we now have five, six, seven, eight, nine banks, which is fine. And we will connect you to that on the red line or on the green line, on the green line. And we can give you a value. And let's have one last thing, just to make it slightly nicer. Here we go. Connect the green line from here to there. Uh, in fact, let's get rid of those lights so I don't have to change all their conditions. Uh, not everything, anything. Yep, that's perfect. And I can just use that blueprint. So all these lights have that setting. So these lights will turn on when their row of uh, memory banks have data in them. So if we turn this on, you'll see the bottom one has data and all the others do. And as this ticks, uh, let's actually add a light here, which will light up whenever red is zero. So that'll light up every time we go up a memory bank. And something is not correct. What am I missing? You look good. We've got to have a read from the next. Yes, here's the line that we're missing. Okay. Easy fix. Select those two and just copy them and move them down. There we go. And turn this off. So you'll see every ticket's going up, that one will land there, and this one will end here. So that's good. Now, what happens if we had this sort of really quick speed, like two? So we'll set up our data and we'll have a look at what the output should be. So you can see we've got some weird flashing happening here. Uh, certain ones seem to go up and then just disappear. They all seem to have data. They should all have the value of 153, 306, 153, 612, 459 so they're all they're all random data and not correct and that's because as i said it takes about four ticks in fact it might take five now because of this one uh, for our data to go through so it's one tick two ticks three ticks that has to go out to here so that's four ticks it takes four ticks for this to be ready plus a tick for this so we'll say five ticks and in fact we can test that so we want this to be a five tick delay. Zero, one, two, three, four. Oh yeah, you'd need to be five. 
Okay, that was really quick, and all of these are 153. So that tells us that all our data um, was made it through perfectly fine. And if I set this down to 4, we should see now that this should fail. So it might work perfectly fine just despite me. 4 might be the minimum speed. Uh, it, it's, you know, one of those joys of programming. Uh, one tick delay, um, off by one error, as I should say, always. Yeah, you can see three. Three obviously doesn't work, but four does. And just for safety's sake, we'll make it five. So there we go. We have our five tick delay, and that's that stuff set up fine. How are we going for time? We're going fine. 20 minutes in. So that's our FIFO queue done for the start. We do need to do one more thing, which is we would need to handle the situation where we've done a read. Put that there and we'll pop open the lovely image again. Nope, not that image. This one, here we go. So when we read it, we've got to also be able to send some data back saying, okay, um, we have sent, you know, iron to the iron mine. So ignore, um, erase your iron waiting values. From your first memory bank. So that would just feed into this one here. Yeah. And feed into this one here would basically set it up so we have a memory cell that says basically, you know, we need to get rid of, uh, let's say, we need to get rid of the iron signal or the copper signal. And once it knows that it went through this system here, so the red line would come from here, it would also have some sort of way to wipe it depending on this signal. So this red signal here, um, and that's how we'd wipe it. But we'll deal with that uh, when we have both the FIFO queues and we're doing the logic circuit to send uh, trains to stations. The thing we actually have to deal with right now is hooking the input of this up to the output of this. Now this can change because if you remember, we're going to change this layout. This is the one that I actually want because we're going to have a blue line that tells us uh, how many individual stations are sending a certain sort of signal. So instead of this setup, and in fact this setup here can change a bit too. Um, instead of this setup where we check you know, it was a signal we got this tick the same as the signal we got eight ticks ago for a certain value. So iron ore, for example. Instead, we can check uh, on the green line. I should say instead of the blue line. Uh, on the green line was our iron ore value one. If it was, then only one station sent iron ore signal. So both the station that sent it as well as this thing can both uh, know straight away that that signal was not tainted. But we have an issue with that, and that is that this is uh, a one tick circuit, basically. Um, this can send a new signal every single tick. So we could have, say, like one tick, it's copper, then iron, then uranium, then iron plates, and then copper plates, you know, all coming through on one tick, boom, 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 straight after each other. And if we set that up here, that would not work um, because this thing is set up so that you know it take it takes four or five ticks it takes five ticks um to send the data to the next line so say we got copper iron uranium uh copper plate iron plate those five ticks uh if we had it directly hooked up to this on the green line only one of them would get through because only one of them would be correctly set at the time where this line uh, goes low and lets the values through so then you might think, okay, what we should do is we should buffer it. So we have a memory cell here. It just, you know, buffers all our inputs and gets ready to set it out. Same way we're kind of doing up here, uh, or we will be doing up here. And then when it knows the right's done, it can clear it. But let's say we got five signals of copper ore. Copper ore, copper ore, copper ore, copper ore, copper ore for stations one, two, three, four, five. Now this signal would be perfectly fine with that because each of them would be on a different tick. The green value would be one for each of those so it would be like yep that's valid 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 
but if this thing was buffering it, it would get copper one, two, three, four, five. It would just add those values together, get 15. And so it would send off a copper or signal of 15. So what we actually need to do is we need to set up a buffer uh, that basically can change our, sig our system from being a different signal every tick to at most um, five tick delay. Now we could always make this synchronized with this system. So this would only be able to send say it's data every five ticks. And that way we know that this system would work because it could just directly hook in in that case. But let's say we got, as I said before, let's say we got copper or iron or copper plate, uh, iron plate and uranium. Those five signals all on a different tick. Uh, this would take maybe 25 ticks to pass that all through. Well, with our system, we want to get it as quick as we can. And that there are five signals that we're fine getting all at once, basically. And they can just get piped through. It's just if we get the same signal. So what we're going to do is we're going to set it up with these. Yep. So we'll have a chain of decided combinators. Each one uh, will use a green line. Each one just passing through to the next, and we'll have a red is zero. Um, yeah, output everything. Yep, yeah, that's perfect. Connect the red lines together, and that'll go to our enabler. That's good. Uh, copy them across. So this way, if we get a signal in, uh, let's add some lights. Here they can get connected to the green line. Like that's the way that it's set up. Uh, anything. Good. So let's slow down the game. Let's not go that slow. So if I set this to a value, you'll notice that the value will, there we go, it'll go through the chain. And when we stop it, it'll stop going through the chain. And if I had a pulse generator, uh, you'd see just one signal go through the chain. In fact, the pulse generators aren't that hard to make, so. Let's just quickly set one of them up. I really should just make a blueprint book of pulse generators. I use them so often. There we go. Perfect. So this will send the pulse through. And there you go. You can see the pulse going through. Definitely go back to normal speed. There we go. So how long do I want this to be? We've got a five tick delay here. I think the nicest system would have this being 10 ticks long. Because we, we want to make sure that we can uncover the whole circuit and we probably want to go a bit longer than that. So I think 10 ticks would be good. So this is what, six. Uh, one, two, you're only nine long. So, yep, that's good. Take that down, take that down, almost erase the blueprint. That would have been fun. So we'll make this nice and nice some landfill. Cool. And what we'll do is we'll put this I think I want it on this side. So make sure you cover everything. But you give me plenty of room to work with. Here we go. So actually the same system, but we're going to 
yeah. change how it works a bit. So we'll do it like that. And up goes to the next one's import. Apparently, I've actually hit the point where I'm not meeting my energy demands. Oh, it was probably, let me guess, yep. Yeah. Right, pull it using a pull of power. So same thing as before, if red is a zero, output everything. Perfect. So the signals will go up this line and they'll go up to 10 up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. That's what, like 14 or something there. It doesn't actually matter. Actually, not you, you. You should tell me, 12. So there's 12 of them, which is plenty. Let's get some more land fill. Cool. So our signals will now go into the bottom line here. And we'll use our red line to signify that. Yeah, that should work fine. Now the next thing we need to have, actually you might be, yeah. How much room did I put here? Yeah, that's that's a good spot for that. So actually I'll move you one closer. Uh, every output import. Yep. Do we want you connected that way or do we want you connected that way? I think we'll connect you this way. Don't need even more. So these ones will be set up. Uh, each thing greater than zero, make it a one. And so what we're going to do, if you remember this circuit over here, we have our, did I even show it? No, but I kind of showed how it would work, I think. Yeah. Uh, if you remember, we have our line that uh, knows if this is below the average and you know, we'll send it and if it's above the average, it will wait. So we're going to actually use that feature and basically what we'll do is we'll say if any signal is in any of these, uh, decide to combine this here and we'll use the same number over here. So if they're in any of these memory banks or any of these decide to combine and in fact we might even use one more memory bank than we have decide to combine Yeah. If it's any, any is if, if it's in any of them, we're going to send a signal on that green line, which is basically just going to act as um, a thing to tell all these to stop. Sending those signals. So if any of these have, say, an iron ore signal, we're not going to get any more iron ore signals. If any of them have a copper ore signal, we're not going to get any more copper ore signals. And if any of these memory banks here, or these few, have it. That way we can guarantee that we're not going to get uh, the same signal through. I believe that should work fine. Uh, we'll, we'll test this out in the real world when we got it. So we've got that. So we're going to need this. Um, oh, do we need this? We may not. See, this is outputting a signal. If we input their signal straight to there, it's ready to add it to this memory bank when it's time to. Yeah, that, that would actually work nicer. So again, just copy that, move it up, there we go. So our signal will travel up this line to the end. Uh, and when it's getting told to write, it will be written to one of these memory banks, depending on how far up the line it went. So 
you know, if we got copper, iron, copper plate, iron plate, uranium ore. So those five signals in that order. Uh, you know, the copper would travel up to here, to the fifth one basically, and then it would get ridden in. The iron would go here, copper plate, iron plate, uranium ore. And so this red line here, just need to think, I believe all we would need to do is say if our red is zero, output it as a one. It's going to in the red line there, so connect it like that. So when this thing does it right, this also wipes all of these. Uh, so that, you know, copper signal doesn't keep traveling up the line because we've ridden it through. Now I think, I think this is actually going to introduce one tick delay. Because of how this works. And of course the easiest way to fix that is just to introduce a one tick delay over here. So this has to go through this combinator and this has to go through this combinator. So they're now in sync again. The rights and these guys are in sync. Your output connects straight up to your input. Yep, so there's no delay there. That looks perfect. Hmm. Now how to test if this works. Easiest way to test if this works would be to make a multiplexer. That just sends five different signals. Uh, I don't know if I've described how a multiplexer works. So basically we will have one line that can send a different signal depending on a clock value. And I forgot to add the clock in. There we go, here's our clock. Uh, you're on the green line, so we'll connect all this up to the red line. Red is one, while red is less than zero, one, two, three, four, five. Output red. That's our five tick clock, and this will be our multiplexer. And so this will say uh, red is zero. Output, let's just go some iron ore signal when red is one, so we use a negative one because this is counting up, so we'll make this count down. In fact, I have described the multiplex because it works the same way that the um, the reading from the memory banks and stuff like that all works. So red is negative two, and we will go iron plate. Red is negative three. We'll go copper plate and red is negative four. We will go uranium ore. Good enough. We'll connect these all on a green line. And if we put this up to a pole, ah, uh, yep, helps if I give these an actual. Condition when red zero, I put everything. If we slow the game down, we'll slow down a lot. You'll see basically every firing, it's getting the next thing. So it's getting, you know, iron ore, copper ore, iron plate, copper plate, uranium ore. So now what we can do, put that there, put that there, that'll work. Put that there, to there, to there. So you see these. Um, it's going up the lines, and if we turn this clock on, mm -hmm. now that isn't quite what I expected to get. So it seems to be writing it out to here, but not to earlier. Red is zero, apple one. Go slow speed. Why have you got two output signals? I must be tainting the line. Yeah, I am. Right, 
let's turn this. Oh, we can't actually turn the clock off nicely. The way to do it is we will have a very large red signal from here, which just means that uh, none of these are in range. Okay, wipe everything. Now the issue is that our green signal here is also getting the output from here, which is bad. So it's an easy fix. You just make these into our diodes. that should be all wired up correctly. Red wires coming from there, green wires are connected there and there. Yeah, that looks fine. And I didn't make these diodes. Everything plus zero output everything. So the green signal here won't get tainted by the green signal on the left side. So now let's see how this goes. Just wipe everything and stop wiping. Turn that off. Hmm, only about three signals got through. I wonder where I wonder where the plate signal went. That's a little weird. It's most likely a sync issue between the timers. Because these now have this delay. In fact I think because they have that delay. I think that might fix it. Now that seems a bit weird, but the issue is that say our first signal comes in here, it'll get to this out of here, but won't be uploaded to it yet when the write happens, and that would have cleared it there. Well, it doesn't go through this combinator actually, to be more precise. So it comes here, goes out, goes in here, yep. Might actually be off by two we'll see um yep turn you on turn you off there we go we're getting all five signals there where's our memory buses here they are and the odd thing is these signals aren't getting passed through so like iron ore should be getting passed up here but it's not so let's have a look at the top down so that's got all five signals, which is what we wanted. This only has iron ore. Now, it's negating the iron ore, activating that. Oh, obviously, if I turn this on, there we go, it'll populate them through. Um, the bottom lines will probably be incorrect because we haven't got that system to stop passing them through if this has a value. not you, you're the one I want. So these might actually, yep, they're all wrong, but that's fine. Hmm, what's an easy way to put in that system? How are we going for time? We're at 45 minutes in. So actually, I think that's a good spot to end this episode. So we've got our FIFOQ, we know that works. We've got this system, which converts our uh, every pulse, every tick, I should say every tick pulses from here into ones that can be buffered until we're ready to do the write. We know all five values will be written. The only thing we've got and as an issue at the moment is because of how this is set up, uh, you know, this is sending data that we don't want anymore because this is telling us, don't give us that data. In fact, if I connect all these outputs and this is going to cause, you know, a slight delay. These will cause a slight delay. So what we would actually have is our import would have maybe a three tick delay. Um, that would have a similar system to this just so that we can make sure everything's fine. Though I don't know if that's entirely required. I'll think about it. Um, but yeah, so we've got our FIFO queue that works, it pushes things up to the top and it will store uh, multiple signals provided they're all different and we've got this which will convert our single pulse into stuff that we can add in 
we've got this green line out here, which is basically telling us constantly don't send any of the signals because we've already got a value for them. Uh, because our multiplexer doesn't actually look at that at all. And the last thing we're going to need to add is basically in line with these lights over here, the same system as this here. So if certain memory cells have data in them, don't send those signals again because they're full. And we'll wait till they're flushed out and then we're good to go with sending those signals again. So if like none of these memory cells, maybe another three or four up here, and none of these memory cells have an iron ore signal, we can get an iron ore signal in because there's a place to store it. But yeah, that's JackB1024 signing off with episode 20. Our next episode, probably just finish this little bit up. That shouldn't take long. Uh, between the episodes, I'll change this circuit here to reflect the changes. And I'll also change it so that, as you can see, like, you know, our circuit wire, say this red goes here, then the green goes out from here into here, and then the red goes from here to here. So I'll change it so that every tick is basically a new column. And so we know data on the left, uh, any data on the right requires data on the left to be processed first. So it'd be like this tick, then this tick, then this tick, this tick, this, this line, this line, this line, this line. So it'd be a much nicer layout. So I'll do that between the episodes and change it slightly to reflect these changes here. But otherwise, yeah, that's it. This is Jack B1024 signing off. Till tomorrow, have a good day.